Hello there and welcome back. My name is Elena. And I'm Fotios and this is the Game Court. And today we're going to do something new. And we like new stuff. We're going to uh, talk about uh, designers, board game designers yes. particularly. We're going to do it uh, one designer at a time mm-hmm. per episode. And we're going to talk, uh, we're going to call it Let's Talk About. So Let's talk about somebody. <laughs> Fotios, let's talk about... Vital Serda today. Hmm. Yes, and we chose Vital Serda because uh, we have played most of his games, I would say, mm-hmm. by now. And they're most also. Apart are, from one, I'd say? Apart from one, yes, mm-hmm. this is what I think as well. And they're, they're big, hefty, complex games, yeah. the kind that we enjoy. Mm-hmm. And we've just played mm-hmm. his. The last game that we wanted to play off of his list, we've mm-hmm. just played it very recently. And mm-hmm. because we played it recently, you know, we keep on discussing about his games, yes. and it's all fresh and new, so I said. Let's give it a go. So we will discuss a little bit about Vital Seda in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then we will discuss about the games he has designed. The order of the games is the order we have played them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't yeah. want to be biased towards anything until the end, so yes. I think it's only fair to just put them chronologically rather than by preference, because it's not a top. Um, not, yes, but at the very end... We will say what we prefer, what I prefer. Top and three, what and you top prefer. three. Top three for me and top three for Lena. And we'll variant. do that for every designer that we're going to present on this series. Yes. And if you'd like to see a particular designer covered in our channel. Oh, that would be super cool, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah, just let us, know. Let, us, let us know in the comments. Assuming we have played his, his games or their oh. games, right? Yeah. I mean, there's so many designers yeah. out there, but you know, you never know. If it's something nice, we'll try it. We'll see how it is. Exactly. So let's talk about Vital Serda. Let's talk about Vitala Serda. <laughs> so Vitala Serda is a Portuguese designer um, and he is very famous for his very big complex designs. Um, there is this BGG comple- complexity rating, the BGG is the website, Board Game Geek, mm-hmm. and all of his games, or most, most of them, his games are above complexity 4 out of 5, which is quite complex. You know, in some cases, people would argue that it's uh, complex for the sake of complexity, But in some other cases, you know, the complexity is nicely um, interlinked with the theme, which makes it very appealing, I would say. I may also add, if that's all right, um, talking about complexity, most of his games are interlinked with his themes. Um, But I do find that in, I want to say, not all, because we've not played all the games, but all the games we've played, there is always a list before you start your action. <laughs> there is always a one, yes. one, one to five point uh, points that you need to take before you even decide to put your meeple or play your card. Mm. So I think some of the people might might think that this is, you know, complex for the sake of being com- complex because of everything is a list. Mm. So if you if you can you know if you can digest a list before you even do something, then this is the game for you. This is the the, the designer for you. And uh, even for us now these days, when we play a game from uh, Vitala said that I have played multiple times, we may still do some uh, rules mistake between mm. us, or we may forget a couple of stuff. Usually to our disadvantage. Yeah. We forget to take benefits. Yeah, but it's all about the benefits most of yes, the time, correct. isn't it? Mm. So let's start with the games. The first game we played for Vitala Serda is called uh, Lisboa. This was the first game that was introduced to us. Mm-hmm. And uh, in all honesty, we were quite, quite overwhelmed by the design. It was at the beginning mm. of our board game journey and it was also big and bright yes. and up. Like to play Le Serda like Lisboa at the beginning, I think it was a little bit cruel. Well, at that point, we have played some good designs, like some complex designs, yeah. including Brass Birmingham. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't say it was in the very beginning of our gaming career. <laughs> I think it was to the point that, you know, we've never encountered this designer and there was never a list before you did anything and there was never, you know, so many steps to take before you actually did something. Yes, yes, so yes. it was a completely different kind of approach towards the yeah, game that yeah. we knew. That's what I think I meant. Yeah, Lisboa is about uh, rebuilding... Uh, Lis- Lisboa? 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 Lisbon? Yes, after the uh, 17th, 18th century earthquake and uh, fires and everything. Uh, and basically you are doing some uh, actions with some nobles over there Mm -hmm. and you are rebuilding the market and uh, um, while most of the games of Vital Serda have worker placement Mm -hmm. so you place your worker there if you can unless the space is blocked the difference with Lisboa is that instead of doing worker placement you play the card and depending on what the card is you take the actions of the respective noble which makes it a little bit um, I would say, I would argue, and maybe people will hate me for that, luck-driven, because it really depends which card you have. What card you have, exactly. yeah. So you may not be able to take an action 
when you want to take an action, not because the action is blocked, but because you don't have, you don't the, card, have the cards, yeah. which is a bit, to me, is a little bit, uh, I don't know, it, it, feels, it feels strange, I would say, in a big game like that. I mean, it has elements of where you build a market, where you have to build buildings, mm -hmm. and it has the same elements of... Um, bonuses on on the yes, side columns and rows yes oh, that you know will intersect and wherever you go you will get the, 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 the sides yes and get the cubes you'll get some cubes that improve it's more like an improvement like a like a yeah. mini game within yes. your board correct you can um with every noble you can trade stuff with them mm. so you can use towards building um the market the market the market yeah. um or you can just Trade stuff with them. Oh yeah, Influ or, influence. Use with your them. influence with them. Use your yes, influence yes, with them yes. with your little tokens that you can get mm. in some other way. So technically, this is what you're doing. You also do some shipping, some exporting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, it's not the game that I enjoy the most of his games. I, actually, it's the game that joined the least of uh, Vital Games. This is my personal feeling. I'm not sure where you stand. I felt like the theme was not particularly. You know, it wasn't because of all the nobles around and the influence and <clears throat> i felt that the theme was not as you know self-intuitive intuitive mm. so it was quite hard to actually understand what was naturally needed in the game as a natural step so you had to actually think of you know i have to do this or i yeah i, I need to i need to do this and this and that otherwise it's not going to work you're doing all this peripheral stuff that don't really make sense for the theme exactly i agree with for, that. just for the yeah. sake of doing it like they're the little little game and i understand the market and where you're building i understand all of that i kind of understand the nobles but there are a lot of like little Empty places that have been filled with yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's the thing we go, you go around, take benefits every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And mm. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm I am not uh, an architect, but I don't know. It maybe, just didn't make much sense for me. Maybe if it happens that we play again the game, maybe we like it more now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think right now, as it stands, it's my least favorite game of Italy. Did we say we're not going to class them? <gasps> Okay, sorry, but I can't say it's my least favorite. We, we said we're going to discuss about our top three, right? <laughs> I see, fine, well, you can get away with that. Yeah, okay, then. thank you. <laughs> Next game that we played chronologically, not because somebody likes it or dislikes it, is Mercado de Lisboa, which is a, like very similar to Lisboa, but it mainly um, has to do with the market where you mm -hmm. build. So it has that element of Lisboa where you build uh, in the market the same, very similar way. Um, this one has a market of cards as well, where you can buy people and they can help you on yes, towards yes, the yes. journey of building mm -hmm. within the market. It is a smaller game compared to the Big Lisboa game. It's on the lighter it, side. Yeah, yeah, Much yeah. lighter side. Much lighter compared to what... It's not a very straightforward Lacerda game. It's not a big, mm -hmm. listy game and nothing like that. But it is made in conjunction with another designer. Uh, I think his name is Julian Pompo or I, something like that. I think, so, I think something like and that. And he has also... This, this another guy has also designed Pampero, a game that uh, we are really... We are really looking forward yeah. towards, yeah. Uh, and uh, technically, that's that's what yeah. the game is about. Mm -hmm. It's quite little, it's quite fast, and it's quite enjoyable. Before we go to the next game, please let me say that most of the games by Vidala Serda are published by a, a company called Eagle Griffon Games, and the quality of the games is superb. Actually, they are very, very expensive games to get. <laughs> like and very if, expensive games. if we're games. here to uh, mention names, the yeah. Neon Tool is normally the artist. Yes, and has an amazing, has done amazing work with uh, with all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Neon Tool has done an amazing job in all of the games. And they're all of all the art that he produces is so different. So it's not like one mm. single thing, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But he is so versatile that different all his games are different. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Mm. So what's the what's the next game on the list? What's the next game? Well. I cannot say it, but the next, well, the next game is called Kanban. Can and I say that we just really like this game? Is this a first Kanban is a very good game, it's, I cannot lie. It's I amazing I think this is game, how we yes. started. We played Lisboa mm. and then... We were like, mm. We're like, mm, not sure. Yes. And then we played Mercado de, Mercado, Mercado de Lisboa, which was... We were like, mm. I mean, it's not as complex yeah. as we liked it, but it was a good game. And then we played Kanban. And then Kanban made so much sense like 
Kanban was the game that made me want to play more of his games. Yes, but yes, me yes, particularly, yes. personally. Mm -hmm. So technically, in Kanban, you are in a, an automotive factory mm -hmm. and you build cars. This is what you do, right? And you have all the little departments within the game. Um, you are an employee, so you go from department to department. Your boss is there called Sandra. That's apparently his wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the, the good Sandra or the mean Sandra. Yeah, so it depends yeah. on what mood Sandra is in that day. You can yeah. play with one or the other. Mm -hmm. So technically, what you do, you go from department, you get your designs, you go to another department, you get your, your spare parts. Spare parts. Mm -hmm. You can exchange because you have a recycling center there if you need mm. to as an extra action, as a free action, put it that way. Then you can go with your spare parts and your designs and you can create the cars mm. that come out yes. of the factory of the, of the line, onto, yes. onto the um, um, testing. testing track. Area, yes. There's like yes. a testing track there. Um, and there, from there, you can actually get your cars and put them and then you get like little bonuses from here and there. And test the designs mm -hmm. and do weekly meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, to set the objectives and get more have points a pet from that. Project. Like, yes. It's so it, like you don't even have to know. I'm I again. Still, I'm not a designer. I'm not an architect. I don't produce cars. But this game is so easy to follow. It isn't makes it? sense. It just yes. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness. So I have the design now. What do I need for mm -hmm. a car? Oh yeah, parts. Yeah. So you know, you know, you need parts. It's yeah. so easy to just follow. It's cra it's crazy nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the new very fancy edition of Kanban, which is called Kanban V. We have the old edition of Kanban and we are perfectly fine with that. <laughs> I don't think uh, we're going to change it. But yeah, Kanban is a very, very good game. And if you are to, uh, if you if you are thinking of making your first steps towards Vital Lacerda, I would personally recommend Kanban. Yes, try this Kanban is probably first. what you should try first. And this, uh, it is significantly lighter than Lisboa. I think Lisboa is one of his two most complex designs. I would say. Kampan is one or two steps down, I would say, complexity-wise. But it's nonetheless super enjoyable. Yeah. And then, what did we play? Then, the next one we played, uh, for me, has one of the best board game covers ever. Mm. And that's On Mars. On Mars is arguably his, uh, his, complex, his most complex uh, design. Um, and it's basically about colonizing Mars, as you can imagine. Um, and uh, the cool thing about the game, it's also work placement and everything, but there's one cool thing about the game that I really, really like. This, you have the uh, space station and you have um, uh, the moon and you have uh, basically... Mars. Sorry, yes, Mars. It's in of the name. Oh, yes, on, on Mars. On the beautiful moon. cover. <laughs> yes, on Mars. So, I keep yeah. on saying moon as well. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> it's you, actually Mars. And you have worker placement positions on the, sta on the uh, space station and worker placement positions on the Mars. And basically you can have workers either here or there. And you can travel with a shuttle between uh, the space station and the Mars, which is very nice. And you have to be very decisive when you do the travel because, you know, this uh, shuttle goes Only more goes frequently at the beginning, but as yeah. the game progresses, it's less frequent and less frequent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to you be have to very timely. You want to yes. This makes this this increases the complexity of the game to another level, I mm -hmm. would say. Uh, but still I think it's a very nice game. It has different elements where yeah. you for example the more you colonize, the more mm. people you can get from Earth. Oblady, yeah, yes. So you have little rackets that little come little, back yes. to you yes. from Earth. To you and then you can expand your population in there and you can get some different stuff with it it's pretty cool isn't it it's pretty cool and uh, you can do many different stuff you can take contracts scientists and all of this stuff but again this is arguably his most complex design mm -hmm. um very pretty say, yeah. long yeah very long i think the first time we played it with the teach and the play it was about five hours or something mm -hmm. very yeah. long very enjoyable but very long so yeah, that, that's uh, on Mars. What's the next one? The next one you really like. <laughs> Is it? What do I like? What's the next one? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> What's the next one? Escape Plan. Oh yes, this is one of my favorite <laughs> ones. And Escape Plan, compared to all the other mm. ones that we have mentioned, is a lighter game of his. Uh, yes. It's probably not as light as Mercado de Lisboa. You know, when we say light, we mean like close to 3.8 or something like that, out of 5. I'm mainly yeah. talking, you know, his game compared to his games, if anything. Yes. And technically, in Escape Plan, you are <laughs> a thief and you have your loot. And what you try to do is you, you know... You don't have your loot yet. You don't have your loot? Your loot... Yet. You do have your loot, but it's all scattered throughout the city. That's correct. And the police <laughs> knows that you are the thief and they know you. So the police is all over the city mm. and they are trying to catch you. So what you have to do is you try to collect your loot throughout the city and escape without the police catching you which sounds awesome 
And it is. Sometimes uh, kill some police officers as well. You have to kill them way. or move them <laughs> or, or them, yes. give them towards your opponents. Yeah, so move them towards here. You. <laughs> you have a hospital that helps you in case you're very wounded. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get um, allies and stuff like that. You can get equipment. The equipment to help yes, you. You can you, get gas to you travel. Can, You can break safes, so you can get more, like, you yes, have little yes, yes. safes that you can break and you can get more extra stuff. You can collaborate with uh, with motorcycle uh, uh, gangs. Yeah, so gangs can, and the gangs help, help you. you. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool, isn't it? And I mean, <laughs> I feel that the game is very thematic and I find it very easy to plan my moves and to escape the city. I think I win most of the time in this game. I, I don't know what I do wrong in this game. I'm just a loser in this game, I would say. Oh, maybe I was a thief in a previous life or something maybe, because maybe, it works yeah. very well for me yeah. it's very easy to you know you're literally a thief and <laughs> you just try to get as much loot as you mm. can from safe houses from casinos and mm. bars and all of that because there are different buildings that you can go to and then it has this like nice mechanism out of a set of cards um, exit will come when two of the same cards will If two of the same cards will come out then, then out of the three exit, yeah basically. it's not an exit anymore and there are three mm. Three possible three exits. Possible exits. Yeah. So, you know, you have to be quick and swift to be close to the one that might be the potential exit. Yeah, because the later you go to the exit, the more you pay to exit, actually. Mm-hmm. It's a very and cool, the harder it is. It's a very, very cool game. I really like it. Super thematic. But I'm not good at it at all. And shall I say that out of his big games, it's possibly the fastest one to play? Mm-hmm. It, it's quite nifty to play. It's, uh, it's I mean, yeah, breezy. If you yeah. still like a Lacerda game with a list, with complexity, but you know you cannot be chewing onto a 4.2 <laughs> for five hours, then I think this might be the game for you. The box mm. is just as big, the quality is just as beautiful, mm. the art is just as good. Cool. The next game we played from Vital is uh, it's called Vinos, and uh, is, uh, I would say, the overproduced complex version of wit culture. <laughs> Shall I call it that? <laughs> What do you think? Is that what you'd say? <laughs> no, not exactly, but yeah. It's about producing... I mean, it has wine in it. <laughs> it has wine. It, we produce wine from Portugal, where uh, Vital Acerda is from, from different regions of Portugal. And you produce wine, you age it in your farms, and uh, you take workers, and uh, if you take workers, they maybe age more or whatever. And um, they... Like specialists, isn't specialist, it? yes. And then you have a middle a part where you move your worker to take a main action every three actions or so every three rounds or so you have also a festival where you uh, showcase your wine or whatever um, you can uh, sell your wine you can uh, export your wine for end of game points mm-hmm. yeah there are cool stuff you can do in the game um, it's, it's it's a cool game it has uh, the old rules which are, and they has now the new rules i think the old rules are a bit more mean i want to say i'm not sure about that but uh, yeah it's a very cool game it's one of the favorite one of the favorite games of one of our friends so we we get to we play do it. play it yes, yeah exactly. we do play it enough mm. but i like the theme is quite nice yes I, the theme is nice i wouldn't say it's the most um straightforward theme i wouldn't say is I mean, the production of the wine and the aging and all of that and the festival seem like a good idea and they might seem like they are easy to grasp, but I don't feel it's as straightforward as it should be, to be perfectly honest. And in every round, the beginning of every round, you also have these uh, weather effects. Uh, which might affect your production. So you may have no production at all in a round, yeah. or you, it might affect the quality of production to the better or to the worse, the different weather effects. So yeah, you may have pest, and then you lose all the grapes. Mm. Yes, no, right? Talking about weather, mm-hmm. the next mm-hmm. game we played is Weather Machine. I love Weather Machine. I thought we were not biased towards the game. I, I didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say anything about ranking. <laughs> Yeah. Anyhow. So what do you do in Weather Machine? In Weather Machine, there is this theme <laughs> that um, you are a scientist mm-hmm. and um, y- there is... What's his name? The head scientist is yes. called Professor Latif. Latif. Which is the... Latif. Uh, o- the o- Latif, the opposite of Vital. Basically. Which is the opposite of Vital, yeah. correct. <laughs> um, and you're this crazy professor that has invented this machine which plays with the weather so it does change the weather as you want but the machine is broken because when the weather changes in one when you change the weather in one place the weather changes differently in an opposite side or in a different side of the world the butterfly effect 
So what you try to do, because what you are is you're an assistant to this professor, mm -hmm. you try to fix the machine and you try to... Um, build a new machine, basically. Build a new one by... You try to get some funding from the government, try to fix this old machine, try to publish some papers so you show that, you know, this is how it should actually be built towards. Then you do breakthroughs. So after you publish the papers, you use the papers or cite papers of others mm -hmm. to do the breakthroughs to get everybody the awards. Is, yeah. Everybody is literally mm. an academic and you're publishing papers to improve the system. You get these uh, chemicals, this material, you have the cogs, you have the robots, the bots that help you do different stuff in the yeah, machines. Yeah, yeah. I personally like the theme of the game a lot because I'm an academic and I can see the theme in it. I can everything is very nicely integrated for my mind at least yeah <laughs> my mind doesn't work just as well as yours but i still see the theme behind it and i think it's it's fairly neat and i like how there are different departments that help you towards this madness of a machine that just does a lot of crazy stuff the more you play with the machine the worse the weather gets the more you play with the government the more the government will give you incentives and stuff like yes, that and yes, they yes. will because because you know you've you've uh, spend so much time with them and you've invested so much in them they will give you some extra stuff mm -hmm. towards your breakthrough papers so it's quite interesting really you mm -hmm. can cite papers which is quite cool so you know oh you just need that little piece of puzzle that's missing but somebody has already published it oh you can just cite it that's super awesome yeah it's a very very nice game and uh, for me it's the second best art of the series the first one being on mars it has a uh, an amazing cover as well, an amazing in-game art weather machine. And actually it was our best art of 2022 award weather machine. Yeah. <laughs> you can see our 2022 awards it? in a link here. And then the last game that we played... Most recently. Most recently, and this is how we decided to actually make this. We played this game in the 24-hour marathon that was uh, organized here in the UK in July. And actually this game was... Uh, taught to us by Luke Hector, who has the channel called Broken Meeple. Thank you, Luke. And uh, yeah, the game is called Gallerist, yeah. And as the, as the game, as the, as the name entails, the gallerist is just about a gallery and you are a gallerist. So you would think that you um, are trying to build your gallery or trying to discover new artists, mm -hmm. you uh, buy and sell and display art, you bump up the prices and try to, you know, get fame for your artists or for the art that you have bought, uh, so you can sell it at a better at price, better price yes. or for it to be more famous for people mm. to actually buy or people to actually admire more. But for such an interesting theme, you can the, get art, contracts. the art is quite poor. Um, Why do I feel, I feel yes. like I need to say that? It's like, it's incredibly plain. <laughs> I, I want to mention something. When I opened I want the to box, I was something. like, uh, really? So you have three types of visitors. Yes. Brown, white and uh, pink. So if you put them together, basically you have Napolitan ice cream. Yes. <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, you know, I don't know whether he did it on purpose, which he yeah. must have to be perfectly mm. honest, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> now... Away from this, from the art, which I, I, I agree is not the best of the series. Especially for like, mm. I mean, I was so disappointed because the name is The Gallerist, right? So you have a gallery, an art gallery with paintings and yeah. pictures. You and don't stuff. have the paintings though there. You have some, some art in the but paintings. So, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not an artist, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that aside, I think the game is amazing. Oh, the game is pretty awesome, Mike, <laughs> I must say. It, it it just works, mm -hmm. like Kanban works. Mm -hmm. Everything is very nicely interlinked together. You have to discover artists. You have to to buy their art. Mm -hmm. You have to push them to become more famous, yeah, yeah, to yeah. increase the, the price of the art. Then you have to sell the art. Mm -hmm. You have to have collections of galleries, to have the best display at the end of the game. You use your fame to, you know, yes, get yes. people to improve their, f yeah. to improve your artist's fame. It's pretty cool. It's such a good game and, and mechanically it's nice. It's not, it's not, it's not the heaviest. Yeah, it's not the heaviest. It, I can work a placement and if you're, if you're kicked out from a space, you have uh, the, uh, the, 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 the option to do the action again by sacrificing fame. It's actually a pretty nifty game. I quite enjoy it, to be honest with you. Yeah, but art is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the one game from Vital we haven't played is uh, the CO2, um, uh, which is a semi-cooperative game. Mm -hmm. so, and that's yeah. mainly because um, 
I do not function very well with cooperative games. Mm. Um, I mean, we have tried plenty, but we prefer to play a competitive rather than a cooperative game. So now that we came to the end of the video, what are your top three games? Shall I say my third, you said your third and so on and so forth? Yeah. Okay, so my third one, my third best of uh, Vital Lacerda is a uh, weather machine. I really like the theme in that and uh, to me it makes sense. It might be a little bit to the more complex side, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's very hard to actually make a top out of this, isn't mm. it? Because I'm like, oh, I like that one. But I like that one, but I like that one too. So which one do I like? So what's but your I, number three? I think because I win a lot at it, it's going to be escape plan. <laughs> escape. And I'm proud to say that. <laughs> escape plan, yes. <laughs> How about your second? My number two, I think, is the gallerist. If we just played yeah. very recently, maybe it's also the, you know, um, the recency bias here kicking in. Uh, but I think gallerist is a pretty nice game, mm. very clear. And uh, yeah, I really much enjoy it. I mean, it might be to some extent, mm. but the game really makes a lot of sense. And I think it does deserve the second place. So second place, easy peasy. For you as well? Easy peasy. All right. And uh, I think I think we agree in the first position, Do you want to shout right? it together? <laughs> Kanban. Kanban. <laughs> so yeah, Kanban is, uh, I think, for both of us, the best game of the Yeah, Alexander. that's the one that makes the most far, right? sense, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I think yes. that's mainly why it's there, mm -hmm. because it's complex enough that we like it very much, and it takes a little while to play, and we like that. We like playing a big, crunchy game, and it makes mm -hmm. so much sense. And we love it. we've played it so many times and it's still so easy to replay every single time. If you feel like you got bored, just give yourself some punishment and play with the mean mood of Sandra. Yes. <laughs> it's always something different in the game. Even though you kind of do the same things, mm -hmm. it feels like it's a different game every time we play it. And that's why we like Kanban. it the most. Such a good game. Such a good game. So yeah, that was our first episode of the designer series. Oh, I really hope you like it because yeah. I really like it. We really like it. Yeah, and I think exactly. I really like talking about, you know, talking about one single designer and mm. you can see their, 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 uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hmm. The similarities and differences mm. between the games? Yeah, I well, let's say similarities and yeah. differences. There's their little story that they actually tell throughout their games, mm -hmm, isn't mm -hmm. it? And see how their mind works and how they think of stuff and how they decide to put stuff together. And some of them are so clever and it works so well. Talking about this, I have to say that Vital must be a very smart person to well, put, yeah, to put these sure. games together, right? Because they are, they are quite... Mm, Clever things yeah, and heavy very things, clever isn't it? Things, yes. yes. So here, I mean, he doesn't publish very many games, but oh, yeah. all of them are to a very high complexity. Most of them. Yeah, we'll try to do most of the more of these episodes, at least for designers who have played a few games, like mm. a, maybe five or six games. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, so give us soon. give us your suggestion of what you would like to see, and it's most likely that we played it. Well. We'll, we'll see. see if we played yeah. it or not, <laughs> exactly. and we'll look into that because I we really like following the the designer stories as well. It's quite interesting, isn't it, to see somebody's train of thoughts and whatnot. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Bye. Bye.